First impressions. When my fiance was still in the navy, he decided to introduce me to his stepbrother. He begrudgingly did this because his stepmother, the closest person he has to a mother, insisted he spend time with him. His brother is a druggie and an alcoholic. To this day, I do not know if he's ever been sober around me. My fiance explained to me that his stepbrother Jay was rude, was a loose cannon, and a mean drunk. He usually only spent his short leave periods with close friends, and his stepbrother was one of the people in which he wished to avoid, since all he did was pick fights. Whenever anyone in his family did anything and became successful at it, his stepbrother took it as some imagined slight. We arrived at the restaurant, and his stepbrother was already plastered. His friends were there having a good time, as well as wife. My fiance turned to his sister-in-law and asked if the steak at the restaurant was any good. His brother gave me a disapproving look. For whatever reason, did not approve of what I was wearing. I am a thin person, and the short I chose according to him made me look too, too thin. I was miffed, but I knew better than to say anything. I watched my fiancé struggle to keep his cool. Jay tried to order my fiancé a beer, and my fiancé said that he didn't want to drink. Jay was trying to pick a fight, and suddenly without warning, he started throwing money at us. This is what I think of you, he shouted, foaming spit flying out of his mouth. I was confused, and I checked my fiancé's expression, and he looked worried. I just want to have a nice dinner, he said, eyes still on the menu. What? My money isn't good enough for you? He started throwing it in our direction. His wife, all too familiar with his violent outbursts, tried to calm him, but he just kept charging like an angry bull. His friends murmured for him to calm down, and one of them was brave enough to tell him that he would just want to have a good time and enjoy our meal. Instead, Jay stood up and pointed a finger at my fiancé. If you want to fight, I'll be waiting outside. Jay's friend followed him to calm him down. Minutes later, we heard the sounds of breaking glass, followed by a car alarm. Jay had put his friend's head through a random car window, and then ran across the highway to avoid arrest. My creepy near-step siblings. I've told this to some family members, but never really to anybody else. When I'm 28 male, was nine years old. My mother moved myself and my two siblings from Texas to Newark, Delaware. She wanted to move in with her boyfriend and his two kids, Dina and RJ. Dina was about 12, RJ was about 13. It was my mother's intention to marry the guy. It was the summer of 1995, and the place we moved to was a nice, if decidedly blue-collar suburban neighborhood. The 50s-era houses were small but kept nicely up. There were plenty of kids around, and there was even a close-by Dairy Queen and Pat's Pizza to walk to. All in all, it was a fun summer. Except, the two siblings had some weird, creepy things going on. They were 12 to 13, and thought it was fun to play stripping games like we play a go fish version of strip poker and get down to the underwear. The daughter would go overnight to sleep in the house of an older man who lived alone. I think he was 60 something man who was either divorced or widowed because he had an early 80s Atari system set up that we play with. So I assumed he had grown up kids. In retrospect, there was a creepy incident with Dina where while swimming in a pool, we were underneath the unturned tube together and she wrapped her arms around me and made kissy noises at me. I mean, she was 12, I was 9. What the hell kind of 12-year-old girl flirts with a 9-year-old? As for the son, for a few weeks I slept with him in his room. We had a bunk bed, with me on the top one and he on the bottom. Things, things were normal. We watched late night cartoons and the like. Then one night, RJ asked me to sit with him on his bed. RJ said we should practice making out for when we have girlfriends. He didn't actually kiss me, but he did the same kind of kissy noise face that his sister did towards me, and put his mouth close to mine while making smooching noises. RJ was pretending to kiss me. Then RJ wanted to get naked with me underneath the covers. He asked to take off my underwear and do a strip tease, 
which mainly consisted of taking off my underwear and jiggling my hips, and then he did as well getting naked. That's about as far as it advanced, because I think my mom sensed something was off. She started having us keep the door open at night. I eventually moved out of the room because the relationship between my mom and the dad devolved, and he had us move into the side area of the house while we started looking for another place to live. We were there in total from June to October of 1995. Looking back, there was definitely something wrong with the siblings. What 13-year-old boy asked a 9-year-old boy to put on a strip tease for him and asked him for a pretend makeout? I shudder to think about RJ is like at 30-something now. I was being groomed for sure, and by a 13-year-old, which just makes it sad. I consider myself extremely lucky that no actual molestation happened, and even though my mother hasn't put it so much in words, she said something was extremely, extremely wrong. My stepbrother strangled my dad. On February of last year, my half-brother, who my brother from my dad's first marriage, texted my sister and told her to tell her dad that he would be coming over to stay for what we originally thought was going to be a few weeks at my parents' house. Apparently, he had gone into an argument with his half-brother that he was living with at the time. He came over here so he could get a job here and later his own place. Now, for the first two weeks, he was sleeping on the couch in our dining room, and eventually, my mom told me to bunk with my sister upstairs so he could have the room downstairs since his body odor was so bad that he was stinking up her dining room. Two months later, it becomes clear he isn't looking for a job, so my dad and my half-brother's girlfriend start badgering him to look for one. He eventually does get a job at a spice factory, which didn't work out because he got laid off November of that same year. Two months later, he brings his girlfriend over and never really asked if she could stay here. He would bring her over to visit every now and then, only this time, she never, she never really left. My dad eventually got around to asking him how long she would be staying, and my half-brother said that he had asked him if she could move in and my dad said yes. My dad still insists that he never asked him. He hesitantly agreed, since she was pretty much the exact opposite of my half-brother, and he was hoping that maybe she could motivate him into getting a new job, since he was still unemployed at the time, and there were also a lot of places hiring near us. Flash forward a few months, and my half-brother came to my mom and handed her an ultrasound. His girlfriend was pregnant. With his girlfriend pregnant, my dad was pressuring even him even harder to get a job. A little while later, he found one at a harbor freight, about an hour and a half away from us. He was spending most of his wage on gas just getting there. In the following months, up to when the baby was born, he would make creepy comments to my younger sister by telling her how good she looked in dresses and things she would wear to church and other really disgusting things like that. He acted like he owned the place and had rights to whatever he wanted by eating all the food in the house, especially things my mom was saving to feed everyone for dinner taking up the whole couch with all his electronics, controllers, and cords, and taking two hours in the bathroom to shower, even though he'd still come out smelling the exact same. Eventually, the baby was born, and now he had to have some actual responsibility, which went, well, which went as well as you would expect. Fast forward to today, my mother told me not to go in the family room, because my dad was going to tell my stepbrother that he was going to have to find a place to live by October or else he was going to kick him out. While my dad was talking to my half-brother, my dad was holding my half-brother's baby. My stepbrother was sitting across from my dad, and after he told him, my half-brother suddenly jumped up across the room, grabbed a hold of his neck and started strangling him, all while my dad was holding his baby. My dad gave him two punches in the face, which didn't even faze him. The baby was crying in his hand, all while her father was choking the life out of her grandfather. My half-brother finally stopped when his girlfriend started yelling at him to stop, which he did and got his car keys and stormed off. This just happened ten hours ago. We think he went to his mother's house. We, we, we still haven't heard from him since the time I posted this. And he hasn't even contacted his girlfriend to ask 
if she or the baby is okay. I saw that he was Steam about three hours ago, and the last thing he played was a porn game. We have the entire house locked up, and my dad is sleeping on the couch downstairs in case he comes back. Our biggest concern right now is that he has keys to the house, and he might come back and cause more trouble. And before you ask, we wanted to call the cops, but my dad decided against it because he wanted him to get a home for his baby and that he wouldn't be able to get another job because we would have a criminal record. He's not allowed to come back and we are planning on putting all his stuff on the front lawn so he can come and get it without having to come inside the house. His girlfriend is welcome to stay as long as she needs to. She is thinking of breaking up with him because she is scared that he might harm her or the baby since he is able to do what, what he did to his dad with blame disregard to the fact that he was holding on to a baby. Sorry for the errors with my English. I suck at writing. My sister helped me write most of this. I will update you if anything else happens. My stepbrother saved my life. I just want to apologize in advance for any typos you may stumble across. Since I'm writing this from my phone and Spellcheck has a wicked mind of its own, there is a second part to this story, and since this one has been very long, I will post it separately if requested. I have no proof of this incident, which you will learn why throughout the story other than some photos of the house if you would like me to post them. I would like to give a little background on my story before I begin. I was around I was around 14 years old and female. I am 25 now. I live in the middle of nowhere Pennsylvania, surrounded by cornfields and woods. The house that I lived in was an old trailer, so it was long and not wide, but this will be important. My family owned the land behind our house, and there was around 70 acres so the only neighbor we had was across the street, and they mainly kept to themselves. With this being said, we never locked our front door. We had a back door, but the hinges were rusted shut, so we had always just kept it locked because no one was count coming in or out of it. My mother was going through a midlife crisis, as I like to say, because she was drinking all the time and had a multitude of different guy friends, whom she would bring around me and my brother, who was around 10 years old. At one point during this crisis, she brought home a man, Dan. He was an okay guy, but something always struck me as odd about him, but I could not place the feeling. I was young at the time and knew little about what he was doing. Drugs, crimes, etc. I however didn't, did not know everything and I'm glad I did not at the time. After about a week of non-stop partying, they became an item and not long after he moved in, which meant his 15 year old son came too. The son, Sam, was nothing like his father. Sam was a very polite and respectful person, and I remember on multiple occasions asking him how he turned out so great. His response were always the same, I don't want to be like my dad. After about six months, I had forgotten the odd feeling or pushed aside, and we had turned into a dysfunctional family, I guess. We had our ups and downs. But knowing that I had someone who was around my age made things seem a little less horrible. Many nights, while my mother and Dan were out doing God knows what with God knows who, the three of us were left home alone, which as kids, we thought was the best thing in the world. Sam and I would send my brother to bed around 9pm, and we would just stay up, listening to music and playing guitar, until we saw headlights, and then we would run to our rooms and pretend like we had been asleep all night. One night, Around midnight, we were sitting in the living room, he was playing and recording a song, when all of a sudden he stopped, and looked over at me a little confused. I smiled and asked him why he had stopped, and he put his finger in his mouth to silently shh me. I started to get a little worried, and took a quick look around the house and saw nothing. He took his headphones off slowly, putting them down, and he walked to the front door. We always have a blanket covering our front door and I always thought it was to keep the light out. He lifted the blanket just enough to see the doorknob. He instantly clicked the deadbolt to the lock position and pointed for me to move to the floor. I was freaking out at this point, and I did as he wanted and laid down flat on the floor. 
He slowly crept over to me, as to not make a sound. All the while, his eyes were fixed on the front door. When he made his way over to me, he very slowly laid himself down next to me and held my hand. I had my head buried into the corner of my arm and was silently sobbing, and every time I looked up, he would shake his head no, and I would begin crying all over again. We lay, we lay, we lay there like this until 3 a.m., when we saw headlights coming from the kitchen window, and I felt his grip on my hand ease up. I looked up inside and asked softly if we were okay now. He looked at me and said yes. I felt like I could breathe again, but there was still this knot in the bottom of my stomach because I still had no clue why he had just laid on the floor for three hours in silence. Sam got up to unbolt the front door, but he stopped when he got to the speakers, and I watched as he turned off the record button. He walked me to my room and told me he would explain in the morning because he did not want to get caught out of bed. I laid in my room and listened to my mother and Dan laughing in the kitchen and slurring their words. They had fought for a bit, and then I assumed decided to go to bed, and then there was silence again. It hit me like a ton of bricks and I started to sob. And at some point I had shed my last tear and I fell into a nightmare. At around 6 a.m., I jolted up from my bed, and I was completely drenched in sweat. I, I had no memory of my dream, but I knew it was nothing compared to what I was about to face when I saw Sam. As soon as my feet hit the floor, I bolted for my door. I needed to know. I had to know why we had spent three hours in utter fear that night. As soon as I swung the door open, I saw Sam standing by my door. His eyes were bloodshot, and he looked as if he had aged five years. Are you okay? With the first words that spilled out of my mouth. And as he shook his head back and forth, I instantly remembered why, why he looked the way he did. I need to know why. He cut me off and spoke in a very heavy voice. Come with me. He grabbed my hand and pulled me down the hallway towards the living room and sat me in front of the speakers. He gestured for me to put the headphones on. And I took a deep breath and did. He pushed some buttons and all of a sudden, I could hear the guitar playing in my ears. I was blankly staring in front of me trying to figure out what I was supposed to hear. Sam turned another knob and the playing got louder and in the middle of a chord ending, I could hear a rattling sound. The sound was not something you hear all the time, but it was a sound that I could immediately place. It was a sound of a door jiggling. My eyes widened and my heart felt as if it was going to burst out of my chest. I heard my voice come through the headphones asking why he had stopped playing. And then I heard another voice. It was deep and almost demonic, and it said, Let's try the front door. I heard the footsteps fade away, and then a click, which I knew was Sam, dead bolting the front door. There were sounds of us moving around, and then silence. Then I heard the footsteps yet again. I could hear them climbing the stairs, and then moving the doorknob ever so slightly. And I could hear crying in the background, which is why I think I did not hear the doorknob moving. After about 10 seconds, I heard the same dark voice, fuck it, we'll come back when they're home. I felt tears running down my face as I heard his words. I ripped the headphones off and told Sam, we had to go tell my mom and dad. He agreed, and we ran to their bedroom and opened the door. I was scared to wake them up, so Sam said he would, and he walked over and told his dad he needed to talk to him. When they finally got out of bed, we took them out and let them listen to the recordings. I watched as they both got a look of pure terror across their faces. And his dad reached up and hit some buns and told us not to tell anyone. I found out later that day from Sam that his dad had erased the recording. We sat down and had a family meeting that day and discussed the code word and where we would go if someone ever broke into the house. I remember begging them to call the cops, but every time I mentioned it, they would yell at me and tell me not to say a word to anyone. So we kept our mouths shut. I still to this day do not know why we were not allowed to call the cops. The only thing I can figure is that his dad was big into drugs and he did not want the cops snooping around. Every time I try to ask my mother about the whole situation, she shuts me down and tells me that the past should stay in the past. So this is the second part to my previous, previous story. Once again, I would like to apologize for any typos within this story. I am typing this out of my phone and spell check is funny like that. 
I would like to give a little background to the story before I begin. The second part to my previous story, which has become far too long to add anything more to. At this time, I was still 14 years old, only about two months had passed since the first story. After the events of the previous month, Sam, my brother, and myself were not left at home as much during the first month. The following month, however, my mother and Dan had begun to go out more and more, leaving us to fend for ourselves. The three of us sort of stuck together whenever we were home alone. We would constantly double check the locks to make sure we were locked in tights. When it was time for my brother to go to bed, Sam and I would sit in the hallway outside of his bedroom door with our pocket knives clenched in our fists, just listening. Every small noise would make my heart skip a beat, and with every sound I truly believed we were going to die. This went on for a few weeks, and with each passing day, Sam and I felt a little better, telling ourselves that they would have come back by now if we were going to, right? My mother and Dan had pretty much brushed it off to the side, or at least that is how it felt about it anyways. After about a month, they started going out more often, and once again, we were at home, all alone, almost every night. My grades had started to slip, which was the result of lack of sleep. I had started to fall asleep in classes, because in my mind I was safe there. Even though Sam and I had started feeling more at ease, we would still sit in the darkness and wait until we saw those bright, beautiful headlights coming through the kitchen window. About two months later, we had received our report cards in the mail. I had always been in charge of getting the mail after school, and when I opened mine, I was in complete shock. I knew I had been missing homework assignments and not doing well on tests, but when I saw the two Fs on my report card, I was in disbelief. I held on to it, along with Sam's and my brother's for the rest of the week, for fear of getting in trouble. Friday had rolled around, and I knew I just had to hand them over to my mother, so, when I got off the bus, I walked to the mailbox and casually acted as if I was just pulling them out. I slowly made the walk of shame to the front door, and when I walked in, to my surprise, my mother was not home. I laid the report cards along with the other mail on the counter and sat down on the couch, awaiting my punishment. My mother and Dan did not come home until almost 9pm that night, which was very unlike them. They may have went out almost every night, but they were always there to greet us from the bus, and the five hours it took for them to get home. I remember becoming more and more angry. At one point, the feeling of dread washed over me that maybe something had happened, but I had pushed it aside and focused on how mad I was. When they walked through the door, I remember saying something to my mother along the lines of, Where have you been? Which sent her in a fury. One thing you don't do is talk back to my mother, especially when she has been drinking. She began to yell and scream at me, telling me something along the lines of, Mind your own business and who are you to ask me this? The anger I had accumulated in the past five hours finally let loss, and this was my first and last time I stood my ground and let her have it. We were in the screaming match for probably about five minutes. When I had enough, I stormed out of the house and slammed the door. It was a beautiful night. There were some stars in the sky and the big storm clouds passing overhead. I remember at some point that night, I heard thunder, but I was too caught up in my own anger to give it a second thought. When I walked down my steps, I remember hearing the sounds of twigs snapping, and I turned my head thinking it was a deer or some other wildlife. It was not uncommon to find a group of deer standing in our yard. At that very moment, when I turned my head, lightning filled the sky, and it was like someone had turned a light on outside, and there standing in the side yard were two men. I cannot tell you what they were wearing or what they looked like because my eyes had landed on something more terrifying than the fact that they were standing in the yard. Even though I had only saw them for a few seconds, the images of their guns were what my mind had focused on. The moment the sky turned black again, I screamed as loud as I could. I was surrounded in almost complete darkness, the only light source being the kitchen window and the faint glow that was cast on the ground. Within seconds of my scream, I heard the front door fly open, and Sam was running out towards me with my mother, Dan, and brother in tow. All I could do was point towards the side yard and sob uncontrollably. And right then, we all heard the sound of the car door slamming shut. As I looked towards the road, I could see the faint glow of red, and I heard the sounds of tires speeding away. Sam pulled me into him, and I lost it. I could not stop crying because I knew we had almost died. Once back in the safety of our house, I told my family what had happened. 
and without saying a word, Dan grabbed his gun from inside the drawer and walked out the door. I have no clue what happened between the time he left and when he returned two hours later, but I remember him hugging me and telling me that we were safe now. He refused to speak about the incident afterwards, and I never saw those men or Dan's gun ever again. Stepdaughter for sale. This actually happened to me when I was a kid. I'm a girl and was eight years old when this happened. I grew up with my mom and my stepfather in an apartment in Chicago at the time. So you know, my stepfather was a crackhead. He used, I'm pretty certain, cocaine. Every day, he was a pretty good father, considering he was high all the time. I felt way worse close to him than I was ever with my mom. We spent lots of times together after his morning walks. His habit got really bad. My mother was the only one who could work since he kept getting fired. My mother recently got new furniture, a whole living room set, two couches, lamps, and tables, rugs, and she even got a new TV. She was pretty proud and happy, mainly because she was able to hide enough money from my stepfather to buy everything. A few days after she got everything, my mom and I went to Burger King. We came back to the apartment. My mother opened the door and her smile dropped. There was absolutely nothing in the living room. She told me to check my things, my bike, all my video games, my TV, and clarinet were all gone as well. There were quite a few other things gone around the apartment. You already know who was the culprit, my stepfather. Apparently, he owed some people for drugs. He said he had no choice. They said to pay up, or it would be everything he loves. As you see, his habit was very, very bad. Now to the meat of the story. One day I woke up to my stepfather calling me. It was pretty early. The sun just started to peek into my room. I got up and heard him in the kitchen talking to someone frantically. I couldn't hear much since my door was closed, but I do remember making out a little bit. He said, man, she's beautiful, and you won't be disappointed. I slipped on my house shoes, trying to figure out who he was talking to. I heard one response, but the voice was very deep, so I couldn't tell what he said. It was strange for anyone to be visiting our apartment, and especially strange since I it was so early. I was tired, confused, and a bit annoyed at being woken up. I opened my door. From it, I have a straight line of sight to the kitchen. I see my stepfather nervously fidgeting, pacing and talking. He saw me and said, here she is, man. I stood in my doorway and tried to give him a look like, who in the world is he talking to? He motioned for me to come in. I walk into the kitchen and see a tall, older white man with shades. Looking back, maybe he was late 40s? He was balding, had a short beard, and was dressed very nicely. My father said, here she is. What do you think? My parents tend to show me off to people for some reason, so this wasn't odd to me. The man looked at me, I presume and looked back at my stepfather. My stepfather had the most nervous smile on his face I've ever seen. My father told me to give a twirl. I was not twirling in front of this strange guy, and definitely not this early. So he forcefully turned me. He held my nightgown taut so it was fitted against my body and said, not bad, right? I pushed his hand off me. This was clearly very, very strange now. I. I, I did not understand what was going on, but I knew something was, was, was wrong was happening. The entire time, the white man said nothing, just watched me. My stepfather said, You're going to have to go with him now. I frowned and asked why. But before I could really start, the white man spoke. He squatted down to my height, smiled and asked, How old are you? I said nervously, I'm eight. He said, You're a big girl then. Do you like school? I said, I love school. This little conversation and his smile made me feel a bit at ease. I looked over the man's shoulder and see my stepfather frowning and glaring at me and it scares me. I have not seen him look like that except as suspicious people to warn them not to mess with him. I kept looking back to my stepfather, trying to answer the man's questions as well. Knowing I said something wrong for my stepfather's reaction, the white man glances back at my stepfather while still squatted down to my height. My stepfather looks away in fear. The man stands up, looks back down to me, and says, It was nice talking to you. 
You're a very smart young lady. Now, go on back to bed. I was not used to anyone giving me orders except at school or my parents, but I knew not to question it, and I walked off to my room. I looked back, and he was watching me. I stood inside my room at the door and looked back again. He said, close your door and go back to bed. I looked at him, and he smiled back and motioned for me to go on. I closed the door and sat in my bed. I hear the man say something to my father in an angry voice. I hear my stepfather begging very loudly, please, please take her. The kitchen has a door leading to the outside staircase. My window was pretty close to it. I hear the kitchen door open, so I slid my window open a crack. I hear my stepfather repeatedly begging, please. The man yells, she's a fucking kid. I try to peek out to see the staircase. There are two large men standing there near the door and on the stairs. The white man punches my stepfather, presumably. I can't really see the whole scene. I hear a thud inside and outside. I suppose from him falling. The white man and the two men walk down the stairs to a nice black car parked in the alley. I hear the kitchen door close and soon after, my bedroom door opens. My stepfather is drenched in sweat and smiles at me sheepishly and says casually to not tell my mother. I just stared at him. He then asked, did I want to go to the park? I said no. He walked away and left the apartment. I sat there trying to put the pieces together. It clicked that my own stepfather was trying to sell me, more, more than likely to pay off a huge drug debt. Then everything else fell into place. The strange, oddly friendly white man considered taking me. Why would he take me? What would he do to me? Where would I go? What about my mom? Feelings of fear, anger, and sadness flooded me. I laid there and cried for hours, thinking about how close I was to never seeing my mom again, and that my stepfather planned to do this to me. My mother eventually leaves him some years later. I still haven't told her about it, afraid she might lose it. I'm 26 years old now, and it's so hard to think about it without crying.